Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Chavica Trade Group, and it is Thursday, March 10th. So we've got one more day of the week to go. Uh, it's kind of been a long week. Uh, there's been, you know, a, a whole slew of headlines. Again, we've been dealing with that with a very headline driven market for the last couple of weeks, probably a little bit longer than that at this point. And, um, you know, uh, plus a lot of events. And you know, it's not going to get any quieter next week. Uh, and you know, really kind of taking this market for what it is, which is a pretty damn good uh, day trading market. And, you know, um, you know, also a market where you can position a little bit in some of the things that continue to work. Um, you know, that's been the market that we're dealing with and it might be the same next week. Um, specifically what I'm referring to is we have uh, FOMC next week. So we've got the Fed meeting on Wednesday, right? Um, it sounds like we're we're almost 100% chance. I think Fed fund futures are pricing in for a rate hike on Wednesday, all right, 25 basis points. But it really will, um, and we'll talk about obviously this more because this is going to hang over our heads for the next few days. But um, it's really going to be more of what Powell says for guidance going forward. Remember, it's always about what the market is pricing in and what it's not. And right now we we're, we are um, you know based on those Fed fund futures are pricing in a 25 basis point hike. So a quarter a quarter of a of a percentage point. That's already priced into the market. So that really shouldn't move the market too much. It's really going to be what the language that Powell says going forward about you know what the future path of rate hikes and the um, uh, the tapering of the balance sheet and and, and all of that and the speed of that's going to happen. You know, remember the last time that he spoke, he was a bit shaky uh, during the Fed meeting and um, the market didn't like that at all. Uh, that was the last Fed meeting, right? He has spoken since then. We've heard him speak. Uh, he was in front of Congress last week and he actually sounded a bit more confident and, and sounded pretty good. So I don't know what Powell are we going to get next week? So that's definitely one of the events. And then we have quadruple witching next week too, right? We're not only, uh, you know, and they're already doing the, um, the role of the, of the um, futures, right? So S and P futures, which are the big contract that that change that um, that trades one of the most liquid assets out there. That they're rolling that until um, till June, right? And then of course the one that never that nobody ever talks about is the um, the index rebalancing, right? So all the S and P, right? Not just the the ad hoc, you know, we're putting one name in and taking one name out. It's the whole index is being reshuffled. Right, so that happens every quarter, and that's part of quadruple witching. That happens uh, Friday close of business, so you're going to see a lot of you're going to see a lot of volume next week, and you know a lot of those moves are not just don't just happen on Friday, but they're pre-positioned. Right, the the official um, index changes and reweights are announced Friday after the close, and um, and portfolio desks at institutions begin to kind of. Uh, position for that around uh, around there. So anyway, I didn't want to lead off, you know, I didn't want to go into detail about that, but it's just something to kind of keep in mind. And I, and I do like to talk about what um, some of the things that are, that, you know, um, are going to be weighing on the market going, going forward. So that's that. Um, but as far as today went, you know, a, a re, bit of a retracement from yesterday, right? So if we look at the, um, if we look at the SPY, for example, Right. And, you know, what were we up yesterday? 2.7%. So, you know, not that bad, right? Down 45 basis points. The Qs at one point looked kind of iffy. I think they, were, they retraced about like half yesterday's move. Um, and they only finished down about 1.1%, 1, 1 .1%, which was, again, better than, um, than where this was like midday today. So, um, you know, it is what it is. These indices are dealing with, um, you know, the market's dealing with a lot on its plate right now. So this is still not a, a not a good picture. It's a mess right now, this S&P chart. I'm not going to rehash this. Um, you've heard me talk about there's three or four things that I don't like. You know, specifically, we're below the 200-day moving average. We've been making lower highs uh, every time that we rally, and uh, we're below the value area for the month. These are all no-nos, right? Um, what I do find interesting um, besides this and, and, you know, it's too early. I see some people are like, oh, 
you know, we that's it. We put in the low. You know, I, I don't agree with that. I, I don't think how you could say, first of all, one day, which we discussed, um, you know, in the in the trading room yesterday, one day is not a trend. Right. So I don't care how great something looks. Uh, and it was a great day yesterday. There's no doubt about it. It was a huge rally day. But one day is not a trend. And we really didn't take anything back yesterday. So you kind of just take it for what it is, right? And try not to really, the more that you get mixed up with trying to make outlandish predictions in this market, the more that you're, what happens when you make these crazy, when I see people make these crazy predictions on online, on, uh, on Twitter, right? What happens is then you get anchored to that prediction and you can't adjust to new information. And I'm sorry, but you can't say that the low is in for the S&P. Do I um, hope that the low is in for this year or, you know, <laughs> for, or for the near term? Sure. But this is not a good looking picture. Uh, by any means. So you just kind of take that for what it is. Now, my level that I think that we could get down to and possibly hold. And, um, you know, if if this week closes now, right, we've got another kind of floating hammer bar, which is not a bad thing, right? And my level that I think that, um, you know, we could get down to and possibly, and, and possibly hold, which would be, which is 4071, which is not that far away. So, you know, either way, it, you know, for, for my technicals and what I'm looking at volume at price, right, it's, it's not all that bad. Um, but I think that we could definitely, you know, pivot in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, it's possible. I'm not saying it, it's going to happen. Um, but I would try to just, you know, take it day by day with this market and not make any crazy predictions, especially with the three or four things that I already mentioned. One of the things that I, that I find interesting, and this is what kind of, you know, makes me think sometimes about the market is when you do look at like the composition, right, of this market. So I've talked about this a couple of times today. If you've heard me speak about it, and uh, I talked about this in a couple of member videos today, we do a pre-market session here at Tribeca Trade Group at nine o'clock where we go over setups and of course all the commodity moves that are taking place. And then we do a, um, a midday video too, where we talk about today's themes. But um, what I think is just interesting is, is how much the energy sector has, has rallied, but it's really not gonna impact the S&P. Um, why won't, you know, another 20% move up in, in energy stocks really impact the S&P? Because they're only, a, it's, they're only a 4% weight in the index. That's it, just a 4% weight. And some other things that are, you know, acting well, there's no, you know, there's no metals and mining uh, sector in here. They kind of have that divided up a little bit between, um, you know, a couple of the bigger sectors. This is the GIC sectors, right? Um, so materials, which covers some of that group, right, is, um, is only 2.6%, right? It's the smallest group in the S&P. So, you know, you're just not going to see big outperformance um, until some of these bigger groups, you know, really the, the participation is going to just from a mathematical standpoint, right, because uh, tech is 27% of the, of the S&P, healthcare 13%, consumer discretionary and financials, another 11%, you're going to need to see these groups participate for this to really turn, right? So energy and materials and, and, and like utilities, which have been strong recently, they could continue to, to run, but they're not going to move the S&P. So just keep that in mind, right? And speaking of, of you know, metals and mining, right? I mean, if that's not going to come up in the S&P. It's just, they're just not they're not big weights at all, but um, this is what I kind of want to, uh, wanted to talk about in this video, and it's something that we detailed yesterday. I did not get a chance to put out a video yesterday because I had to run to a dentist appointment, but one of the, I did put out a couple notes yesterday just talking about, for now, sticking with the trends that are working, right? And specifically, if you want to go through some of these metals and mining names, right, the dip was bought yesterday, and that's where I spent um, you know, some of my, you know, uh, trading yesterday was, ba was basically looking at some of these areas that, that dipped yesterday, right? You know, yesterday was about kind of a catch up, um, you know, going back to the Q's performance last week, right? That was a huge rip yesterday for a lot of tech and growth stocks, right? And some, and the financials, which were really beaten up, right? But 
But again, one day does not make a trend and you could see these vicious rallies in bear markets. So I thought while there was that kind of rotation for the day, you know, back into, you know, back into queues. And how much were they up again yesterday? Like three, three point six percent. Right. I, you know, of course, I'm watching for follow through and monitoring, but I just had a feeling that the, some of the moves just weren't going to stick. Um you know, going into today. And I did what I, you know, basically I, I, I did what I preach, you know, I bought um, the dip in something. So, you know, 955 yesterday, right. I bought CF industries, right. All the way I bought the dip in this thing at 87, right. Look at where it closed today up 10 bucks. Right. So buying the dip, right. And this is a big concept, right. And it's something that I've learned over the years and I've, you know, if you've been a regular viewer of my videos, you know that I'm a trend trader. I stick to the trends until they're not trends. The trends are where you make money as a trader, right? And as a swing trader, right? Um, the back and forth, back and forth action, you know, like we're seeing the volatility and, and the growth stocks, that's great for day trading. And if you're a really good day trader, you can capitalize, you know, on, on being objective and going short one day, going long one day, going short one day, going long one day. But that's tough. That's not that's not easy for most traders to do, in my opinion. What works is to find things that are trending. And this is nice because we didn't have things that were, we didn't have a lot of names that were doing this in the, in the first month of the year, right? Everything was a mess in the first month of this year, right? There was a lot of downside price action. Some people did really well with that shorting. Um, I tend to make money when I find things like this that continue to work in groups, you know, like this. So that was, that's what I did. Um, you know, I went back to SEDG yesterday, which was a nice, which was a nice mover, but I unwound that at the end of the day, right? Um, this was a nice trade 335, um, paid 317, you know, and I tried doing a couple other things. Like I've, I've, you know, I day traded a little Sentinel, but you know, with these growth names, I've got one foot out the door as soon as I get into a position because, they're in downtrends and the trend will usually continue. And, um, you know, I've said this before as well, you hear me talk about this all the time, but things can bounce um, in downtrends, um, but you've got to get out of the bounce before it resumes its downtrend, right? Um, so a couple other things that I bought yesterday was, um, was also Devon Energy, right? I bought the dip in that one. Um, that's working. I, I only, I think I only took one target in that one. I took off the CF industries today, uh, just because I, I got a huge move in one day and I'm not being greedy in this tape, even with names that are in uptrends, because let's face it, the CF is extended up here, right? It's had a monster move. It's not early in the swing. It's in the later stages of the swing, right? And it's still acting. There's a lot of volatility. So you have to be careful because if they do come out for whatever reason and say that they're going to talk again, you know, these two sides, um, you know, you can see a reversion back and you have to be cognizant when you've got a, a you know, a conflict going on, right? Um, and then I also bought at the end of the day, um, Alcoa, right? Which, which also same, you know, similar concept, right? You know, was into, um, into support, right? Broke into support. And I unwound this one today because I didn't like how it was selling off, but you know, ni nice gainer, right? And you can look at some other, like C CENX was another one that worked pretty well too um, for that type of move. Um, the, the coal stocks, um, you know, look at the bounce today. You could go through like METC is another one, but you know, look at the little consolidation, right? These are so much better. And like I, the other day I was preaching as well do a lot of preaching, but I had a lot of questions about people who wanted to buy gold. Remember, and I said this two days ago, I said, wait for a little bit of consolidation, right? And here, yesterday, you got a big reversal bar. And if you wanted to, like, I didn't, I did not go back into this group, but I looked at it a little bit. Um, this is the wrong symbol, I'm thinking of WPM. Um, wheat and precious metals, as well as um, Pan American, Right. They they kind of came back a little bit, too. So you could have done something yesterday. Again, I didn't buy the dip in six names yesterday. I did it in like, you know, I put on three trades 
yesterday, but you could have done this in, in a lot of different places. Nucor was one of those names too that had a real nice bounce. You know, so a lot of steel names acted pretty well too after, and the difference here is trending, right? And it checked back into support. You know, what's the support? Well, it's the 20 day moving average. It's also the top of value for me. I use both the moving averages and I use the value areas which tell me, you know, where volume at price, you know, where there's support. And, and I like when the two of them, you know, come together like that. So that works pretty well. Um, you know, select areas of tech, right? Um, ch uh, checkpoint software, right? Which is also kind of in this theme right now of, you know, conflict because we know that there's cyber attacks, but similar thing, right? So what I try to find is this, the same, you know, similar setups that work, right? It doesn't have to be this group or that group, but break, break higher, really nice strength. Um, here's your reversal bar. Here's your check back into the 20 day moving average and completely different industry, right? But same pattern, you know, breakout, check back, hold of support and move higher. Now it does get tricky because, you know, Palo Alto was one where it just kind of slid a little bit too far um, for me, right? But it did come back. It's not as strong as, as um, Checkpoint. I want to say Chesapeake, but it's Checkpoint software. Another one too that I got tripped up on a little bit. Listen, it's impossible to not get tripped up in this market um, was Resolute Forest Products. Um, I saw some call action in here. I've traded this name before. Um, it kind of fell apart in here and I got stopped out on this day, but look at it come back, right? So again, it's forestry. So it's a little bit different than, you know, some of the food companies and so forth. But I mean, it's amazing, right? We talked, to, I didn't take this one yesterday. This is NTR, but I posted this one because again, I can't put on like, four companies, three or four companies in the same industry. That's also how you could get run over a little bit. Um, right now it's working, but um, here was your check back into the top of value yesterday, right? In Nutrien, right? So, you know, these, these food companies, these agriculture companies, the energy companies are continuing to act well. You know, there was another buyer in, um, not service now, um, NOV, right? Um, you know, a little bit of a buyer into this as well, right? I know this name got it got way extended, but the buyers are like coming back into this little dip in here, right? So um, agriculture, energy, metals and all kinds of metals and mining, you know, companies and, um, and uh, coal companies as well, right? Um, also the, the rails are doing okay. It's really, you know, it's funny because we saw the big option activity in CSX, but UNP looks so much better in my opinion. And it's funny, sometimes you don't have to go with the option activity, but look at the nice bullish um, engulfing on UNP today, right? From, from yesterday's candle. And again, that's holding the breakout. A little bit different looking chart, but still, right? It's, it's funny because I saw, I've seen this like posted before about, hey, maybe this year's, you know, th this decade, right? 2020 on, right? We've heard this being called, being referred to as, hey, maybe it's going to be like the roaring 20s, you know, back in 1920 to, you know, for those, you know, the beginning of the years of that decade. Well, it's actually the same types of stocks. It's the energy stocks and the real stocks from that era, you know, which is really, uh, <laughs> which is really ironic um, that they're the ones that have been the big stars this year. So that's it um, for today's video. You know, I, I continue to look for other bright spots in this market, but until some of these things really kind of jump off the page to you, they're still not acting right. So it's, again, it's good for, for the cues, you know, to actually be positive from where they opened because they were, they were down another 1%, but still, let this play out a little bit. And I think that you're, the more that you could kind of sit on your hands and sit out the pain that is going on in growth stocks, um, the better position you're going to be for when they start to kind of turn. You know, there's going to be some definite leaders that come out of the growth stocks in the next few months. But who, you know, how that develops, you, you just kind of have to stay tuned. And um, it should be exciting because as everything has been going lower, you know, except for, you know, Amazon, which announced the stock split, CrowdStrike had a decent day, but you're, but 
it, there are going to be lead, your leaders. If you follow market cycles, right, this type of thing repeats where if all of them kind of get beaten up, once all the sellers are cleaned out in those names, they will get cheaper and they are getting cheaper and they're going to become good buys. So, you know, we'll, I, my goal is to continue to capitalize on what is working, what's trending, and then monitor for when the next opportunities come. So that's where we are in that stage. ARC, by the way, which was down another three and a half percent now is down this group of stocks, which again, I'm not going to go too, too um, in detail about my opinion on their stock picking, but just as a reference point, um, because there's another, there's a whole bunch of other innovative stocks. They just don't buy them. Um, but their group of stocks is down 37% year to date. I mean, just amazing. Right. Um, the S&P is down 10 percent. Um, value stocks are now down three percent, three percent for the year. Um, overall, like more large cap growth stocks are down about 17 percent for the year. So, you know, continue to let it play out. And, you know, hopefully things will get better. You know, maybe not exactly, you know, tomorrow or next week because we've got a lot of events. But, you know, if you're if you be patient, I, I think that you're going to get um some good opportunities this year to come. All right, guys, have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.